What up players, it's War Boss Tay up in this mud. Today I'm doing a thank you video and a uh, also a conjunction, like a video in conjunction with my own channel. And this is for the old git who a lot of you who subscribe to me will know and recognize. Great fellow. I talk a little bit more about him during the course of the video, but check out his channel if you do not know who he is. Just Google old git. I'll put a little link in the description. Uh, you can find him on Google. Google Plus, you can find him on YouTube, where his YouTube channel, Old Git, is uh, just a, he's just a great guy, so I definitely suggest that you subscribe to him if you haven't already. The paints that I used to paint this model, first thing I did was I base coated him, or I primered him in a matte gray spray primer. And what that does, for those of you who have never watched one of my videos, is it makes your models look like this, just like they are when they are on the plastic sprue. So you don't have to ask me why I don't primer my models. I do. I just don't use black or white. I like to use gray. And then the colors I used to paint on him were, in order, Bugman's Glow. <clears throat> uh, I believe I used Mornfang Brown, Steel Legion Drab, Dryad Bark, Lead Belcher. Those should be your cultist colors of choice. Then for the specific pieces, Abaddon Black, Rust Gray, Balthazar Gold, and going into the shades, we used Raiklin Flesh Shade and Agrax Earth Shade. So check out Old Git and enjoy. If you are painting a Chaos Cultist of Corn, then um, this is the color scheme that I like to use. So I hope you can take some inspiration, even if you don't use it exactly like I paint it. And um, stay tuned for a little bit of a ramble and a real-time painting video on how I go about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is painting up a corn cultist. These are one of the guys from the Dark Vengeance set. Most of you who play 40K for at least a little while have seen these guys painted up all sorts of different ways. And uh, today we're gonna paint him up as a uh, as a corn cultist. So some someone who's dedicated himself to the dark powers, specifically the evil god known as corn or the blood god. So while I'm getting everything set up, I'll show you my setup here. I've got my wet palette and throw away this old parchment paper and get a new one. Got this little uh, Tupperware container and parchment paper to reach behind my hobby desk there. We've got a roll of parchment paper. I'm gonna tear off a sheet that will be my parchment paper. And like I say in all my wet palette videos, these are good for, you saw that other parchment paper I just threw away? I use that one, i say maybe like three or four sessions of my, de of my death core here. So I got some water, I'll pour it in. Those of you who are veterans of this know how all this works. And you've got instant awesome wet palette. Some of, some of the water might spill over onto it, that's okay, just make sure it stays on one side. But what you wanna do is just make sure that the water kinda of seeps into the parchment. And what that's gonna do is when you use paint, you put the paint onto the parchment, put a tiny drop of water to keep it moist, and then it will stay moist the whole time. Fantastic, as Sean would say. So we're gonna get started, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to paint the most obvious and the biggest area of skin on him. Uh, most biggest area, surface area of the model, I should say. And we're gonna do that with Bugman's Glow. So we'll zoom in to check that out. And Bugman's Glow is gonna be the first color that we paint our model in. I have started keeping, you might have seen the cups that I just used to hold my water. I started keeping my painting water in two separate cups, one for metallics and one for paint. All right, so I've mixed my mixed my Bugman's Glow onto my wet palette. Corn cultists. Everybody was talking on the different rumor websites about how the quote chaos cultex codex would have like a separate entry for for uh, human like renegades 
where there, there might be two different codexes, one for the legions and one for uh, this regular humans who worship chaos. And that would kind of reflect the new Black Legion, or it's not really new anymore, but the Black Legion role-playing game because in that you can either choose to be a chaos space marine or you can choose to be a human that has fallen to chaos. That's kind of cool for anybody out there interested in role-playing the bad guy. Uh, I find that Fantasy Flight games have done a really great job with their 40k role-playing stuff. Not so much with their fantasy role-playing game, which uh, a lot of people complain criticizes more like a board game than <coughs> a uh, than a role-playing game, which people are used to paper and pencil pen, or paper and pen role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the old editions of Warhammer Fantasy, which which I grew up with, and I've just found that the new one isn't as uh, it, because it's different, it's it's not the same kind of format. You don't have uh, lots of, or you need lots of. You need the you need the book. You need lots of space. You need all of the counters. It's just so alien to a lot of people that when when you get into it, it's, that might be jarring. Anyways, love Warhammer fantasy roleplay, but that's not what we're about. We're about this chaos cultist here. So I like to have fluff for those of you who are not used to my videos. I like to create backgrounds and stories for all of my units. So to help me get through painting this guy, I am going to imagine that he's from a hive world that has been subverted by a corn worshipping cult. The tricky thing about corn is Horn is very not subtle, he's very obvious, so he will not work behind the scenes like Zinch does to, to um, you know, fully subvert a culture. He's very direct, so, so there might be one or two individuals that mask this cult or a club, a, as a club, or as a fraternity lodge, or as something honorable and say that they, they value pride and bravery and courage and all that when really they are just kind of fooling their members into worshipping the blood god. I find some of the other cults like Slanesh or Nurgle or uh, Zinch to be a little bit more uh, subtle in that regard and therefore awesome. So we're going to take Dryad Bark now, and we are going to paint this guy's, um, uh, what do you call these, is these boot covers. So this video, like I mentioned in the opening, is a, uh, is a promotional video for a good friend of mine the old git and many of you who are already watching this will have known the old git as one of my participants one of the participants in my July painting challenge this year and he's uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how I first got in contact with him he was starting out painting a bunch of beast men and he had asked me through private messages on YouTube about different uh, color schemes about m my doing some videos and at the time I remember just having ordered off of eBay a bunch of old out-of-print like centigores um, I had picked up a really good deal from a local player on some on, on, a, on a battalion box <clears throat> So I was in the midst of putting that together. We're gonna go move on to Mornfang Brown now for the uh, boots I'm sorry not the boots for the the pants In fact, instead of the pants, I can't make up my mind. Let's go and do the, the leather, the pouches and his belts and stuff. And uh, I just remember he has a very, he has a very nice gentleman who uh, is getting into painting some beastmen and I I remember just 
uh, him starting to film videos about his Beastmen, and I really liked his his painting, and I thought it was uh, he was a great addition to the community. So I'm really glad, uh, Mick, if you're out there and watching, that you've you've gotten so involved, and he started his own uh, Google group, or yeah, the uh, War Game Chums, and he's just a great, great guy. So, this video is for you. If you want to see his Beastmen, he's also gotten into, uh, like I said, obviously the War Boss Tay painting challenge, and he's also done, uh, or is in the midst of doing Steel Legion Draft. He's also in the midst of doing some uh, bolt action miniatures. So thanks Old Git for participating, he's, I think he's one of the most hardcore participants of the painting challenge this year. Look at me, I have, I prepared this wet palette, I'm not even using it that much. He uh, made a video every single day, and not only that, but he filmed uh, all these tertiary objectives, his, his diorama was just so fun to watch come up and he's just a really great great guy on YouTube now if you're just going for a tabletop standard then one of these coats of paint is enough but if you want to go and devote a little bit more time or if you would like to plan to do that then uh, that it will always they always say when you're painting, for you new guys out there, or for uh, anybody who's looking to increase their their painting skills, they always say that a couple of thin layers of paint is much better to do than a single fat, uh, thick layer of paint. Even if you thin your paints down on a wet palette like I'm doing, it's always better to go with more than one coat of paint, especially these Games Workshop paints, which the new range is, I find, a little bit dodgy. Okay, and finally we're going to move on to the boots, and the boots are going to be simple, dark gray. Uh, but we're going to start by painting them Abaddon Black. Now I'm using this model, but if you're painting a whole Dark Vengeance kit, then you would just carry on the same kind of color scheme to all of them, which is these dark browns, drab browns, black, especially if you're going with corn and uh, Nurgle. Nurgle favors the browns and the, the olive greens, and uh, corn is very simple and utilitarian, and the reason why is because um, that way you can showcase if you want to do blood and gore and stuff like that. And doing that on a model with a very simple color scheme is going to make those colors pop even more. Alright, I'm going to go back over with the dark brown. The great thing about having a painting, a wet palette also, is that when you when you put the paints on your wet palette, you might leave them and go to another color, but when you go back, the paint that you used earlier, like this dark brown for the, for the boot covers, it's still ready to be used. Isn't that amazing? If I, I used to, when I first started painting, Sorry about that. What I was saying was that when I first started painting, I was uh, I made the mistake of using a piece of cardboard. I, I wasn't able to use YouTube yet. Uh, there there weren't really much posters at the time back in in 2009. There weren't many. There weren't any tutorial makers. You had to find everything out by googling and reading articles. So uh, I, I hadn't really done any research on how to 
do proper paint setup. So I, I had my little cardboard box of, of whatever I had bought. I think it was a skeleton maybe or orcs and goblins at the time. And so I, I just ripped off a little tab of the box and I put the paint on it. I added some water to keep the paint moist and then I did that and I thought that would be fine but yeah it uh, it wasn't. It dried out so fast. When you use a wet palette the, the paint stays usable for a long time. Hey, okay, we're taking lead belcher now. We're gonna use this to paint the knife, the chainmail tabard he's wearing, and the gun, his auto pistol. Auto pistol for those of you who um, remember auto pistols, auto guns, auto automatic weapons are throwbacks to the older versions of Warhammer 40k and to the older games out there that featured them. I remember Necromanda had automatic weapons. They're kind of like the uh, heavy stubber, the, the smaller related cousins of the heavy stubber. And I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but the like second edition, I'm going way back in time here, but second edition used the guard used auto guns a lot before the last gun became the ubiquitous weapon as they're as they love to keep telling us <clears throat> I remember there being auto guns a lot in the second edition you it came with all of these rules and uh, different rule books I mean in the in the beginner's box set you had the main rule book, you had the Armory, you had the Codex Imperialis. It was great stuff. Hey, if you want to get fancy and you have some of it around, Corn and the World Eaters favor chains, uh, chains. And so you might want to get some of that uh, Gale Force 9 hobbing chain and you can wrap them around the the hand and the gun and it'll be a cool creative conversion for you to do. Okay, so we're let, gonna let that dry and while we're letting that dry, we're going to, to work on his wristbands, which I thought would be cool to paint in gold and then eventually bronze. So we're gonna use Balthazar Gold, which is a very cool reddish uh, bronze-ish looking gold base color. And we're gonna just paint these wristbands, the eightfold star icon. Hey, beginning painters out there, a uh, helpful or boss tay tip is that if you're painting a small surface area with lots of holes, and uh, your paint gets into it, like it got into this icon here. You wanna make sure that you clear it before the paint dries. So I'm wiping off my brush tip and I'm gonna just pop it through the center so that the paint comes off. Believe me, it's better to hit that before it dries because then otherwise it's, it'll be a lot harder to fix. I'm also gonna use the gold to paint, Yeah, like I said, the belt buckle, bracers and I think maybe yeah you could either do his bracers like this or you could do the brass spiky spiky part of his knife uh, for now I am going to leave it silver Yeah. Okay, let's move on. I'm gonna take some rust gray and I'm going to paint the tubes on his body. So we assume that these are some things that are pumping him full of drugs. The great thing about these models is that you can really justify
creatively through your painting, you can tell a story. That's what I love, tell a story. Tell a story through the model. So my other Chaos Cultist guy that I painted up is a worshiper of Nurgle. Or he's turned into a plague zombie by Typhus, and so his skin is all green, and his weapons are all rusted, and he's pretty much like a zombie with all this blood and gore and stuff sticking out of him. This guy, in contrast, is going to be alive and just really into self-mutilation because he worships corn. So he's gonna have all these drug implants and whatnot sprouting out from him. But do you see how just a simple shift in the painting colors, the colors that you use, the color scheme, really uh, changes the uh, the look of your model. <clears throat> I'm going to paint in black, Abaddon black, the little strap from his auto pistol. Oh, in fact, you know what? Instead of the auto pistol, what I'm going to paint in black is the weapon casing. Another helpful tip is that you want to look at everything you paint from different angles. And this might be a very simple elementary thing, but a lot of people just, and I know I did as well, I paint things looking at it from one angle, and then I hold it away from me and I think, oh yeah, that looks good from this angle, and I forget about it. Then if you pick it up later from a different side, you see that there's all this area that you hadn't painted yet. And um, so this will just save you time in the long run. It's really for perfectionists and people who are really uh, concerned about that sort of thing. But I like it. Ooh, getting a little bit of black on his skin there. That's all right. Yeah, so we're going to assume that this is a cultist who's hopped himself full of all these illegal substances, he uh, uses drugs to get through the day on his hive world, to get through the drudgery of living in the horrible fascist regime of the, the Imperium of Man, and his uh, drug dealers and uh, people have, the, the bad people have kind of taken advantage of that, and they said we will continue to give you these crazy hallucinogenic drugs and up your up your scores if you come and do some jobs for us and he's like what do you want me to do and there's first it's just simple things like uh, just kind of guard this door and don't let anyone in if they're a cop and adopt this arbites or whatever then you know take them out but just do this for us watch this door for the next couple of hours and then we'll give you all the drugs you want and he's like cool and eventually they get more and more weird. The requests get more and more violent. Like they tell him to start going out and uh, attacking Imperial Guard convoys and breaking into different areas of the, uh, the administratum. And uh, before he can even realize it, they've got him coming to these cultist meetings, underground uh, underground meetings and stuff, and, and that was that. So I'm going to paint these little things in his back. You can paint them as boils or as, as whatever, is, but I'm going to paint them as like little uh, little jacks for for the for the uh, the drugs to go into. We'll say that he's so far along that he's gotten all these um, all these bionic implants, and they're just basically 
uh, his masters have seen fit to. He's a good fighter, so they they implant these bionic things so that they can inject even more drugs and crazy uh, uppers into him. And he's got these. Ugh, looking at them just really gives me the, the creeps. But he's got these little tubes on his back as well. So just like the Narco guy, we're going to paint Russ Gray onto tubes. So, do you see how creating a fiction and a backstory for your guys can really help you get through the monotony and the drudgery of painting however many of these you're going to paint. If I've got a wor world eater's army, or if I've got some kind of army that dedicates themselves to corn, uh, a space marine army, they can't just walk around the imperial world they're going to attack. They need to have this, this group on the ground, so to speak. And so that's what these guys are for. He's got stitches on his head all over him, so I'm going to use Lead Belcher for that. Alright, so there is that. Um, and so as you can see, once you move on to the next step, if you look back at the previous steps, some of the things might need some touch-ups, like his trouser leg. You can't really see it under the light, but the uh, primer is showing through. So I'm going to just take a little bit more Steel Legion Drab, paint over that. Check the back. You don't want to see the gray, the white, the black primer, I guess, peeking through your paint job. The Games Workshop paints, like I said earlier, you're going to want to thin them down and ideally do one layer and then what I call like the touch-up layer. All right, and he's got one more tiny little tube injector into his head. So at this point, our once loyal Imperial citizen who got hooked onto this drug has kind of become little more than an animal serving his dark masters or more drugs. He's like a, a junkie. And so he's kind of stopped operating within the confines of normal society and now he's, yeah, just like this. So stay tuned, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to, the last step is we're gonna do the washes and we'll let it dry and then we'll come back in video number two. And stay tuned because I'm also going to do a tutorial on how to paint eyeballs, which is something a lot of people have been uh, mentioning that from my other videos that they would like to see. So, washes for this guy are going to be Raikland Flesh Shade for all of the skin and then for everything else, the metallics, the browns, the boots, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Some people have asked if I use my washes with a wet palette as well. and. Sometimes I do, some of the new washes are, or shades I guess, are thick, the pigment is, uh, the formula for the pigment is, makes it go on and really darken the paint job as opposed to the old Games Workshop shades. So um, yeah, I like to add a little bit of water to all of my washes on a wet palette. A lot of people think you just go crazy with these and just slap it on. Uh, in rare cases, that is true, but in general, you want to be able to put it on and let it naturally kind of move around without pooling in any one, one area. And don't worry if you get it on any of the tubes or anything like that. We'll go back and repaint any mistakes. 
We just want to make sure we have smooth, even coverage over the entire model. It's a testament to the sculpts and the sculptors of these Dark Vengeance models that they look so good with the detail. Like you can see all, uh, all the individual little curves and muscles on this guy's uh, abdomen, on his torso. And you can even tell with the way that he's angling his body a little bit to the left that is reflected in the musculature. Like that. Okay, that's that. And then uh, the last step, like I said, is Agrax Earthshade. I use so much of this, it's like all the way down to the end. So again, I've put on my wet palette, add a little bit of water because it's such a dark color. Now I'm gonna use it to shade the trousers here, the little boot covers here, and the belt. Now we're going to come back and put some of it on to his weapons. Yeah, like I said, these, these cultists, they cobble together their weapons off of anything they can find. Some of them are old imperial manufacture and some of them are just kind of put together from whatever was lying around. So this knife with the eightfold star decoration on it uh, would definitely be something that he kind of whipped together. Uh, put together or was given. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna do some highlights and finish off this Chaos Cultist of Corn. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.